She's a vital character in the theatrical canon, and I don't think she'll ever be out of date. She's she's forward thinking. She's she's someone from the future, and and and, and, a, and a real inspiration. My name is Patsy Ferran, and I'll be playing Eliza Doolittle in Pygmalion at the Old Vic this year. I think all previous Eliza Doolittles have offered something different. My whole life I've absorbed their performances. Audrey, because we're on first name basis, Audrey Hepburn, Julie Andrews, Wendy Hillier, I, I find them so inspirational, but I couldn't choose to say who was my favorite. If I had to choose, it would probably be Audrey Hepburn's because I don't remember this, but as a kid, I used to watch the VHS tape on repeat to the point that I broke the tape because I'd watched it so often. And I was a kid that didn't speak, but for some reason I could utter every single word. <laughs> it's a character that I love and know quite well. I feel like she's in, she's in my bones. My favorite line that Eliza utters, and I think it's something that I want to try and incorporate in my own chat, is uh, when she says, Ia, don't you be so saucy. So I'm gonna call people saucy. When I feel like people are giving me jip, I'll be like, stop it, don't be so saucy. I'm sure there are much better lines, but that's my favorite line. She bit the bowl off the spoon. The, the accent's a whole other chat. The accent in itself is a character in the play. Basically had, excuse my friends. They've got things to do, fair enough. At the beginning of the play, she goes to Professor Higgins in order to improve the way she speaks, just so that she could work in a flower shop rather than selling flowers on the streets. She goes from being this vibrant, unformed soul to the perfect woman, which in the male terms was essentially a statue, someone who didn't think for herself, someone who didn't speak up. There's actual piece of etiquette that says, avoid restless movements either with the hands or feet. To sit perfectly still, almost motionless, is one of the surest proofs of high breeding. So basically, <laughs> The perfect woman was someone who behaved like a statue. She feels like she's compromised herself. She has this rebirth and decides to become the new woman, which is someone who's rebellious, independent, questioning, challenging. And it's something that I think we could all take in and use for ourselves. That so it's important to interrogate and to question and to not accept everything that people tell you have to be and should be. She's a pioneer for women in the 1930s, so she's a good egg.